I feel like, you know, maybe Katra is probably responsible for that technical difficulty we had earlier. Yeah. Um, it did seem no, like It was like a cat walking on the keyboard. But no, you sound. were telling yeah. me backstage that this episode was cursed. It's I mean, hard. curse is a strong word, but uh, now you're all cursed as well, now that you've seen it. <laughs> so sorry. Seven days, you get, it. You get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so this is the first time you guys have actually screened an episode with an audience. How did it feel? Yeah, th that was awesome. You guys, thank you so much for bearing with us. Seriously, thanks, you guys. Um, you're welcome for choosing such a uh, such a non tear jerking episode to kind of launch the season off. But yeah. <laughs> And uh, actually, you have another little bit of a surprise for us. Why don't you tell us how many episodes we're getting? All right, guys, for season four, you will be getting 13 episodes. <laughs> Double the episode order. So now that, means, that must mean you have a ton of great stuff in store for us this season. How did you and the writers sort of tackle season four? Yeah, so at the end of season three, we shook up everything. Um, all of our characters are kind of put into, like, put into new situations, pushed to their limits. And uh, the start of the season, it's, it, everything has changed. All the power order has changed. And it's really like, you know, there's so much that needs to happen for these characters because they're starting to grow. They're starting to come into these roles. Um, you know, we've really been kind of watching them grow up over these last few seasons. And now, you know, for characters like Glimmer and characters like Katra as well, they are now, they've sort of reached that top spot of power. And, you know, the questions that we ask this season are just like, well, what price do you have to pay for that power? Oh, man, we're getting into the deep cut stuff. Now. Yeah. I love it. Um, you know us. <laughs> so, Karen, you know, Glimmer is really the center yes. of this episode. And I imagine this must be a much heavier season for Glimmer. She has a lot of new responsibilities to deal with. Responsibilities that, as we sort of saw, are pulling her away from her friends a little bit. Um, what was it like recording this season and seeing Glimmer through this coming of age? Yeah, um, I mean, Glimmer starts off in a very dark place this season. Uh, she loses her mother in the previous season, and, um, you know, she doesn't really have time to grieve. She doesn't have, uh, you know, that kind of luxury because she now has to become queen and step up to the plate, and she has all of these responsibilities, and she's putting pressure on herself as well. So um, it was kind of a hard season to record. You know, uh, the previous seasons were, you know, happy, best friend squad, a lot of comedy within Glimmer, but this season was a lot of sadness um, and <laughs> butting heads with this one over here. So, <laughs> um, yeah, harder, harder season, but uh, definitely fulfilling, yeah. Yes. And so, how will Glimmer's new role affect Adora and the best friend squad? Yeah, um, it, it's a struggle, once again. So I think all of Glimmer's life, she's struggled with uh, her mom identifying her as a little kid, um, someone that can't take leadership, someone that is, um, isn't enough. And so the one person she wants validation from is her mother. And now that she's passed away, she kind of has to uh, grow into that on her own without her mother to lead her and teach her how to do it. Um, and so when Adora comes in and tries to, you know, lovingly protect her, she's, she's feeling like, no, I need to grow. Um, I'm the most powerful that I've ever been. She has all of these powers. She's actually stronger. Um, and so she has a little bit of a struggle with um, people babying her, I guess. <laughs> yes. yeah. And so, uh, you know, Amy, this is one of the rare episodes where Adora really gets to step back from the She-Ra mantle and help Glimmer sort of ascend into this limelight. She needs a break. I know, she needs a break. Will yeah. we see more of that dynamic? Um, you'll definitely see that uh, Adora struggling to give Glimmer that space. Um, I don't think we discussed this, Noel, but I think there is a desire that Adora has to step into an almost maternal role for her. Like, she babies her. Um, she kind of treats her like a teen a little bit. And then on top of all of that, she really, she promised Angela that she was going to protect Glimmer. So she really takes that to heart and I, I think overdoes it a little bit. And so that's where a lot of their friction comes from this season. 
Um, and so AJ, you know, when we saw Katra, it seemed like she's really reached the point of no return. Like her only goal now is to destroy the rebellion. It, are we at that point? Can she even be stopped now? I don't know if she can be stopped at this point. I mean, we'll have to see. Katra is fierce and she's really determined. And unlike Glimmer, she's never really received proper validation from anyone. And I think this is her way of lashing out for that. Um, you know, in a way she has to validate herself. And that's, that's the reason why she kind of takes over and takes the throne. She's like, Kordak, step aside. Like, I need to figure out who I am. And if that means figuring out how to get to the top, I'm gonna do everything I can to get there. So it is at this point fully about winning. And Noel, you know, we saw a new sort of dynamic between Katra and Hordak. What does that really mean for the Horde and, you know, with the oncoming threat of Horde Prime? You know, I think that, like, Hordak and Katra, they actually kind of have something in common right now where they both kind of, like, got their hearts broken a little bit. They felt, like, betrayed and abandoned. And, you know, in Hordak's case, it's because Katra's actually lying to him about what happened to Entrapta. <laughs> um, so that will be fine. Um, <laughs> but, like they actually kind of like have this in common now. So Katra is using Hordak at this point to get the power that she craves. Cause at this point she's just like, it has to be worth it for her. Like she's given up so much. She's sunk so much into needing to be on top that she can't back down now. It's like that kind of like sunk cost fallacy thing where she's just like, all right, I guess I gotta go all the way. Meaning I have to close myself off from my emotions and distance myself from anyone who cares about me in order to you know, prove that this was worth it. So oh, okay. yeah, it's gonna be a really fun time for them. <laughs> uh, two characters I deeply want to give a hug. <laughs> like. I'm sure they would accept that. <laughs> um, Amy, we see Katra go a little darker this season. What does that mean for Adora's perception of her? Trouble. <laughs> uh, it's funny because they're really growing in opposite directions at the moment. And it's difficult and it's heartbreaking and it's toxic. And it's all of the things that I think we go through in regular relationships in our own lives. You, you fall apart with people. and. Hopefully you, you grow and then you come together. But um, yeah, they're definitely in the fall apart part of it. <laughs> and I think it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch somebody who you know really isn't who, like that's not how they're behaving. Is, how they're behaving is not who they are, for real. Um, and I think she recognizes Catra's pain too. So there is a lot of like empathy there. And AJ and Lauren, uh, will Katra and Scorpia's relationship get any easier? Like Scorpia, you know, she's great. She deserves that kindness, that joy, the reciprocal friendship. I think we can all agree Scorpia deserves the world, so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think we saw in this episode, obviously, that Scorpia is questioning some of Catra's actions and that it's affecting her. Um, obviously, she has great loyalty uh, to, to Catra, but also to all of her friends, and she doesn't feel right about the situation. So I think that's definitely, you know, setting up perhaps more of that questioning for Scorpia. She goes on a bit of a journey emotionally this, this season, which, is, oh, I know. <laughs> Because she, yeah, you know, she's just, uh, she's so full of, of light that I feel like, you know, it's about time. Nice. <laughs> and uh, speaking of our darling Scorpia, you know, we only get a little peek of her at this episode, but she's not letting go of Entrapta very easily. It, where's the loss of Entrapta going to take her in her relationship with Katra? Well, it's obviously a huge catalyst, right? Like that moment, like you see in that moment where she's like, Are we, you weren't really serious about this, right? Oh, you were. Wow, okay. Um, <laughs> man, didn't, oh, I've totally misread this. Uh, <laughs> the line between her and I sometimes, uh, it blurs. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I think that that's obviously a big moment. And this is obviously in this episode setting up that kind of, her going through in her mind what exactly that means like wow that's a that's pretty cold even for Catra you know and so uh yeah more to come nice. Noel anything you can tell us about the more to come I hear there's a very special Scorpia episode this season <laughs> I mean, like, Scorpia, she's someone, she defines herself by the love and the care that she gives to other people, in this case, Katra. She's given everything. She's defined her whole personality around this person that she loves so much, only to see that, like, maybe Katra's not who she thought she was, or she's not getting that love back. So 
how, like, I think Scorpio's journey, just in general, is going to be learning how to love and take care of herself, because I don't know that she's ever... She has this huge part of her, the fact that she's a princess, that she hasn't really explored, that she's kind of distanced herself from because she's with the Horde and being a princess is a bad thing. So, uh, you know, there's a lot I think that she has to learn about herself and uh, a journey of self-discovery that she has to take. Because I think she's someone that she, she kind of lies to herself a lot in order to make everything seem okay. She's, she's a little bit in denial, I think, and it's getting harder and harder for her to keep that up. I think we have a little clip of that episode if, uh, you know, Katja hasn't sabotaged us this time. Let's see if this works. <laughs> and if only we could all be as positive as Scorpia, I'm sure the world would be a much better place. I want to follow Scorpia's daily affirmations every morning. Yes. Yeah. It's like the little kid on YouTube who's like, I am great. Yeah. My aunt is wonderful. I can do anything good. It's like Scorpia is the new version of that. Totally. It makes me so happy. Lauren, you should start an Instagram just for Scorpia affirmations. Really? I think you're right. Yeah. Thank you, right? And also, shout out to baby Scorpia in that picture. Yeah. Come on. Oh. Lauren was just like earlier today, she's like, Are we ever going to see baby Scorpia? And I was like, Mm hmm. Prequel. So, Noel, is there anything else you can tee up uh, in terms of the rest of the season and where we're headed? You know, uh, Hordak got his message to Horde Prime. Mm -hmm. That cannot be good. It is not. <laughs> Yeah, this is a, I mean, we've sort of thrown you guys into the deep end after season three. Everything has changed. The stakes are a lot higher. And the battle for Etheria has never been more intense. And also, so we've got Catra and we've got Glimmer on two opposite sides. They've sort of risen to the top of their respective organizations. And unlike Angela, Glimmer doesn't have the same restraint, I will say. Um, she... She lost her mother and she's not going to lose anyone else. And I think that that pushes her to further extremes than I think um, uh, definitely Dora is comfortable with. Um, and so, you know, there's just, there's, there's a lot still to come. There's a, there's a bunch of really fun episodes, I promise, still in this one. Um, <laughs> but there's also just, you know, the stakes have never been higher and our characters are kind of pushed to their limit this season. I feel like we say that every panel. I'm like, <laughs> this is our character's darkest moment. Yeah, but it's true oh, every wait, season. Oh wait, it got worse. <laughs> it's true every season, and every yeah. season I'm emotionally yeah. get it. I'm like, what's she gonna have in store for me yeah. next year? Oh. I promise, I promise I'll be okay. <laughs> I don't believe that. Does anybody believe that? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but we have another treat for you guys, and before we throw it up on screen, um, you know, Noel, we should probably mention when the new season is going to premiere. Oh, yeah. So you guys are not going to have to wait very long at all to get this season, because it is coming to Netflix on November 5th. So. And you can see we have some new key art and posters for you guys. And uh, you might notice that there's someone who knew sitting next to Katra, Noelle. Who is she? Oh boy. So you oh. guys are about to meet Double Trouble. Uh, you are going to love them so much, because uh, we certainly do. Uh, yeah, I don't want to tell you too much uh, yet at this point, but very soon you'll be getting more details about Double Trouble, um, and I promise you're going to love them. Uh, I, they are under obligation not to say anything about the rest of the season, but I'm not. And I've seen the episodes, and I just want to let you guys know Double Trouble is one of my new faves. And I anticipate a lot of you will be coming dressed as Double Trouble cosplay <laughs> next year. Um, speaking, of, speaking of other tidbits you guys should look forward to in the season, there's another special episode that I want to talk about called Boys Night Out, and Marcus is in here. <laughs> Our, the dear, lovely Marcus Scribner isn't here because he's on the set of Blackish right now. Um, shout out to Bo. Oh, Marcus, we love you. But he, this is very much a Bo and the lad centric episode. <laughs> if you want to give us a little tease about it. Yeah, those those lads are just out there being absolute units. <laughs> 
having a hard time. He does not like seeing his friends not get along. Um, so Seahawk decides that he needs a fun night out on the town. <laughs> and it stays fun, the whole episode. It's just great. Nothing sad happens. <clears throat> <laughs> I tried, guys. I'm really trying my best here to get you the scoops. <laughs> um, so I want to go back to the beginning of the episode really quick. You know, we saw a lot of party planning in this episode. And I'm wondering, um, oh, lost my page there. And <laughs> I'm wondering, who would you choose to be your party planner if you guys had to throw a she-rap party out of all the characters? Oh, out of our characters. OK. Um, Scorpio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Scorpio. She's- 100%. She's going to she's gonna give you what you want. Like, it's, it, you, you don't like it, I'll do five more. Like, you know, like, her only goal is to please people and make people happy. And I think that she would take a party. First of all, she'd be honored. And secondly, <laughs> she would execute it to the, like, letter. Mm. For sure. She'd nail it. She'd nail it. Could you imagine her planning a wedding? I can. Yeah, I can too. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be incredible. Beautiful. It'd That's be beautiful. Release the doves! Yeah. yeah. More! <laughs> More, <laughs> More doves! <laughs> Although, although I must say, uh, she's not a character, but Noelle just threw the like coolest <laughs> wedding. <laughs> so I think it she would do a really fantastic job it's too. It's true. Just saying. There was a sword. <laughs> We cut the cake with a sword. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Um, one more thing before we wrap it up and go to announcements and show you guys the teaser trailer for season four. I would love to go down the line and if you guys could all sum up your character arc for this season in one word. <laughs> Amy, do you wanna do you wanna kick us off? Me? Oh. <laughs> oh. Can I do a hyphen? Uh, patient struggle. Wow. Whoa, wow. Slow burn. Ooh. Whoa. That's good. That's good. Slow burn. <laughs> how do I how do I top that? Um, I would say really sad and dark and deep, but broken relationships. Oh. <laughs> Transformation. Great one. I would say revolutionary. And Noel, can you give us one for just the season in general? Can I do Spinnerella? She's my character. Oh, yes, of course. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Vegetable platters. <laughs> It'll make sense later. You'll get it. Amazing. And just a couple quick announcements for you guys before we show you the first ever teaser trailer for season four. And uh, I believe there will be a full trailer out soon, but not quite yet. You guys are going to get the first look. Um, But before we do that, Han Cholo has New York Comic Con exclusive enamel pins and patches available at booth 241. So make sure you guys go by, get all your free swag. And uh, also make sure you're following all the She-Ra socials because we're going to be celebrating a few upcoming character birthdays. And uh, I don't know if Noelle's planned those as well, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, we're going to do full themed parties for all of them. Oh, really? (laughs) There you go. Did yeah. you, are you responsible for the technical <laughs> difficulties earlier? Are you an yeah. agent How of Catherine? How dare you? <laughs> we actually have multiple uh, October 28th birthdays on the crew, so that's, it's going to be a big party for us. It's nice. I love it. Scorpia should throw the party. Yeah. She's already been planning it. <laughs> She's got like a vision board of Catra's interests, and it's just like... <laughs> She's in all of the pictures. Just like just creepy photos that's taken from the bushes, like <laughs> like paparazzi images. Catra seems to enjoy ice cream. All right, ice cream. <laughs> ah, yes. I play another character on a show called Dina. So, <laughs> round of applause for Superstore. <laughs> Stop. Go on. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, and that about wraps up our panel. But, Noelle, do you want to set up our teaser before we let these beautiful people go? Yes, I do. Um, Here's our teaser. (laughs) Take it away. (laughs) The She-Ra panel, let's hear it one more time for our cast and creator. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.